fact, you seemed a little uh, uncertain. She did really know squirrel, but you know they had a squirrel. So she learned that language, you know, when that squirrel was in the home. <laughs> so I, I have no question she totally got that. You know, um, if I knew that uh, um, all of us were focused on her today, and if she were in here, she'd be hiding in the bathroom. And we'd have to go, you know, pull her out, or she'd be back there in the corner, because she was never one that liked um, attention on her. And um, I never quite understood it because she drew people to her in, in a way that I've never seen. I met her, um, it's been about 14, almost 14 years ago now. And uh, we were at a, uh, uh, our, our, our editor was speaking. She had just sold her first um, novella. And uh, I was there to see my editor and I met her and I just thought, oh, this is a really cool lady, I really like her. And you know, we chatted a little while and then the very next week, we're at um, a Robin Lee Hatcher uh, book signing. And we were standing in line, and I saw her ahead of me, and I said, is that my Diane Hunt? And she turned around with this huge smile on her face. And, you know, she had the best expressions of anybody in the world. She could <laughs> just make you laugh with the expressions that she had. And there was some kind of sisterly connection that happened just in that instant. I can't explain it. But she is as dear to me as if we had been born of the same parents. And, you know, she is my sister in all ways. And I was telling the other, you know, I had um, two other best friends. And we had this little pin that had three sisters on it. And uh, I was telling the other girls about how they were going to love Diane when they met her. And they all accused me of being a, a golden retriever and of liking everyone. But I said, no, she's different. You're going to see. And as soon as they met her, they, you know, there was that same connection. And Denise got us this, these pins. There's four sisters. And that's how we were. That's how we've been for these these years, and have had such fun, to, you know, always together. And and uh, I dragged her to the, all the different writers things, and she was never one to you know want to push herself forward. But I was pushing her, you know, <laughs> because she had an amazing talent um, to make people laugh in real life, but also to make them laugh in books and to shine a focus on Jesus like no one I have ever seen. You know, how could we not be attracted to her? We were like moths dancing around her light. And um, I still feel that light today. I mean, I, I was telling the girls even this morning that as hard as this is, if there's anyone who's not gone, <laughs> it is Diane. You know, she is, she is here in such a great presence in our lives, and she is, it, it's just wonderful that these songs were just such a great reminder of where she is and what she's seeing. And, it, you know, it's just stupendous. Um, when I think back of our years of friend friendship, there's one memory that stands out. We were at an early um, American Christian Fiction Writers Conference, and um, she was staying with me in my room, and a couple of uh, other writer friends came in, Francine Rivers and Robin Lee Hatcher, and she was talking to Jim, and she says, Jim, I have to go there are famous people in the room. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the funny thing is, is how prophetic that was, because the famous person was Di, and she didn't. Um, because God had great plans for her right from the beginning that we didn't even understand. And, you know, her books have touched many people. Her, her new Hallmark movie that will be out in, the, in um, July is going to touch even more lives. But what really touched people and drew people was her spirit. I have never, ever met anyone like her that um, shined out Jesus in such a stupendous way. And she had fun doing it. You know, sometimes you think of... Uh, Strong Christians as being stuffy and no, not much fun, but everybody wanted to be around Di, you know, because she was just, you know, so much fun. And the hardships of life never dimmed her joy. You know, way before she ever got sick, you know, she was a court reporter and she would see all kinds of things and it never dimmed her, her belief in human, uh, in, in the human good that could overcome with Jesus' help. And, you know, she just had that faith in people that was just so amazing. Um, Carrie, uh, came to the um, ACFW conference this, this year, and uh, she um, told her husband that Di's famous. I didn't realize how famous she was. But that's because people were talking about her, the 800 people there, and everyone was talking about how's Di doing, and, and they were texting her, and we were praying for her in the meetings, and it was as if she were there, and um, that's just because of who she, she is. And I, I'm not even going to say was, but she is, because she just shined Jesus in such a great way. You know, and, and thousands have watched her journey through the cancer. Um, if there was ever anyone who showed us how to trust God in the hard times, it was Diane. She, 
just model that. And I never heard her complain. We talked every day, either by email or text or phone. And you know, until she got sick, it was by phone every day. I mean, we talked every day. And um, she never complained, never questioned God, never blamed God. And how many of us would have been whining? I know I would have been whining hugely. <laughs> but not her. She just um, she went through this with such grace. And you know, her, her courage really sustained us when we were quailing at what she was enduring. Her courage drew us on. And you know, she just really was, she never let it get her down. I mean, you know, there were times that she was sad about what was happening, but you know, she trusted Jesus so much and she loved him so much. You know, the book that really launched her was Hot Flashes and Cold Cream. And I just love that title even. But it was, I think it's because she allowed so much of herself into that book. And if you haven't read it, you must read it. Um, but there's a quote at the very end of that novel that really sums up her philosophy, and she said, I will live this life that God has given me with gusto, not wasting a single moment, but using it as he intended. And when my journey here is over, I plan to skid into glory with a smile on my face, a Bible in one hand, a chocolate truffle in the other, and I will yell at the top of my lungs, Daddy, I'm home. And you know, that is what she did. I know she did. And, and so I want to close with Di's own words about how to live. She posted this recently on Facebook in a week that I knew she was having a rough time. But she said, stop right where you are. What do you see, taste, feel, smell, hear? Root yourself in this very moment. Memorize it. Life is made up of these. Don't be so consumed by the past or with the future that you are blinded to your moment. Right now, the one you're given by Almighty God to make a difference. Go out and live for Jesus today, my friends. I mean, really live. You can do it. Start now. Ready, set, go. You know, I don't know what you intend to do with her challenge, but I'm going to follow her example. You know, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, and Zai would never be that presumptuous. She just wasn't that way, but I'm going to follow the trail she's laid out. And, um, you know, she clutched every day with zeal for Jesus. And um, she squeezed more joy out of the mundane than anyone I'd ever seen. You know, we could make a party out of coffee. So uh, that's just the way she was. And I'm going to do the same. Music was a great part of Diane's life. And we're going to sing a song that's one.